Welcome everyone to part 2 of getting every single Minecraft Bedrock Edition achievement. If you have not seen part 1, I'd really recommend you go watch it. It's pretty cool. In my last video, filled with a bunch of ups and downs, I had gotten only 55 out of the total 125 achievements in the game, a very small portion. However, I had just finished beating the Ender Dragon, so I'm already coming off of that huge victory. And it's not like I'm starting at the beginning either. I have a massive house, an infinite food source, and way more achievements to unlock. The only downside is that that most, if not all of the easy achievements are gone. Now, instead of crafting wooden tools for achievements, I need to build massive minecart tracks, stay underwater for days, fall from world height all the way to bedrock, and even defeat the wither. This will be a tough challenge, but it will only prepare me for what's to come in part 3. So, let me take you to where we left off in part 1, with defeating the ender dragon. Fresh off a crazy battle with the Ender Dragon, I happily ride home on my horse, eager to do the craziest enchanting you've ever seen. Protection, unbreaking, efficiency, you name it, everything was getting enchanted. After about 5 minutes, my XP was gone, and then I did some work on my bedroom for some reason. I literally added a TV. Afterwards, I for some reason wanted to mass farm sugarcane for paper, so I decided to dig out a new room in one of my hallways to make a sugarcane farm. For a cool effect, I made the walls out of light blue wool to make it look like the sky, and white wool for clouds. The whole thing's kind of a work in progress at the moment. Not to get distracted from my progression, I headed straight back to the stronghold and went back to the end, where I towered up to the end gateway portal and threw an ender pearl in, leading me to the outer end islands. After about two minutes, I found my first end city, but I had no end ship. Uh. There, I went ahead and got the Great View From Up Here achievement by levitating up 50 blocks by the attacks of a Shulker, first achievement of the video. I would say that I got a ton of loot, but aside from the achievement and some Shulker shells, I got nothing. This end city didn't have a single chest. Whatever, I'll just keep looking. Alright, here's another end city with no ship. Bruh. And another, and another. Seriously, four end cities with no ship. I'm getting these smallest end cities too. Fine, just keep on looking. Oh, a big one? Surely this one has a- Oh, you've gotta be kidding. Oh hey, here's my sixth end city without a ship. <laughs> What even is this? Six end cities without a ship has gotta be a record or something. After searching for what seemed to be hours, I finally found an end city with a ship, and I made my visit fast because I did not want to spend any more time in the end at all. I quickly got the elytra and other nice loot, then put it all in a shulker box and left through a nearby end gateway portal. As I got back, since my gear was in shambles, almost about to break, I repaired them with a bunch of other enchanted loot I found in the 15 end cities I went to. After that, I got straight back to work on my weird sugarcane farm, which I turned into a fully automatic farm. And it took way too long to build because I had to do some terraforming so the farm could actually fit inside my house. Was it worth it? I don't know. I was just in desperate need of paper. It's also worth mentioning that I unlocked the passing the time achievement while working on the farm, which means I've played for 100 days in this world. Now, if I was a Minecraft hardcore YouTuber, I'd have stopped right now because, you know, 100 days challenge. But the only thing this achievement means to me now is that it's the 57th achievement out of the total 125 I need to get. Which is also funny because passing the time was the 74th and last non-multiplayer achievement I got when I was playing Xbox One Edition. This means I haven't been working as hard. But enough of me yapping, let's get back to work. And boy, this is when the grind starts. I made a dirt pillar high in the sky and threw an ender pearl to get the beam me up achievement, then got the smelt everything achievement by making this weird furnace chest contraption and putting a raw iron ingot in one chest and some coal in the other chest. Anyways, it definitely worked. Next, I built a big buff man, I mean iron golem for bodyguard, and jumped into a lava pit with the fire resistance potion for staying frosty. I got trampoline by bouncing up very very high using a slime block, though it did take several tries. Finally, I attempted the when pigs fly achievement, and this achievement gives me flashbacks to when I got every achievement in beta edition. I remember having to search day and night for mob spawners to find a saddle, which had to have been the rarest thing in the game. Not only that, the achievement was the most infuriating thing ever, as the pigs in the game had the IQ of a walnut and would not cooperate. I don't even know how I found a way to get it. Jeez, I really like to rant about the past. Let's not get too distracted. In this version, the achievement is really easy, so I got a saddle, a carrot on a stick, and rode it off a cliff. To its death. Man, I felt so bad. Now that I think about it, every time I've attempted this achievement, I've killed the pig. So 
So, I did the logical thing and made a grave for it. Rest in peace, Piggy. Thank you for your sacrifice. After that little hiccup, the grind had to continue. I went ahead and got the tie-dye outfit achievement by dyeing a full set of leather armor. Though I got it only after dyeing a single piece. I still made the full set because why not? I then went out of my way to get Super Fuel, an achievement where you need to power a furnace with a lava bucket. And after that, I renamed one of my shulker boxes for Organism Organiz Organate or Organizational Wizard. Slaps mystery box. Now it was the time. Time to make a minecart track. Yes, now it's finally the time where I use my entire iron and gold supply on this dumb railway. Somehow, I've beaten the Ender Dragon and recently gained the access to literal air transportation, and yet I'm still forced to make a 500 block minecart track for on a rail. This achievement gets me every time. Like when pigs fly, this achievement is one of the only achievements that I've needed to do in every single achievement playthrough, and I can't decide which one is more annoying. This one, or when pigs f- <sighs> I should really shut up. Alright, back to the real stuff. I built the track in the general direction of the stronghold. I don't really know why, but it might become useful later on. The annoying thing is that I need to build over a giant ocean. It might actually be better for me, but whatever. After I used up all my rails, I was forced to go mining again, something I haven't done in forever. I thought it would be a tedious adventure, but with my fortune pickaxe, it was actually fun, and I got all the ores I needed very quickly. I also found diamonds. After my mining expedition, I used up most of the iron and gold to make minecart tracks, and made the track go all the the way over to the plains biome near the stronghold, so I might use it more often than usual. And when I rode back home, I got the achievement. Next, I did something pretty adventurous. After making some water breathing potions, I headed down to a nearby ocean monument. Before I even saw the monument, I got mining fatigue, but it wasn't a huge deal. I went in and immediately got the deep end achievement by killing an elder guardian. I then made quick work of the next elder guardian and got another achievement. This time, it was free diver by staying underwater for two minutes. I swam around and found a sponge room, so I decided to smelt one of the sponges for the dry spell achievement. And for some reason, after that, I tried getting the sleep with the fishes achievement for staying underwater for 20 minutes minutes. When I was not really underwater, I thought that if you were below ocean level, you could just AFK there. And that's what I did in the ocean temple until I realized I was being stupid. So when I finally figured out what was wrong, I went back home and got the achievement the correct way by using a magma block for infinite water breathing instead. I think I might have afk there for too long, because once I got the achievement, I didn't notice until like 15 minutes later. After that weird ocean trip, I got really lucky. I decided to trade with my mending villager because I wanted to upgrade his trades. And the next enchanted book I got was Frostwalk. And it would have been useless if not for the achievement Let It Go, which requires you to walk using Frostwalker on a deep ocean. So I immediately traded with the villager since I have the zombie villager discount and put it on a different pair of boots. I went and walked over to the ocean and it didn't work. Turns out it needs to be a specific ocean, and this ocean wasn't the right type. So I went around looking for the right ocean type, and while I was looking I found a jungle, which I'll need for future achievements. Anyways, the deep ocean was right next to it and I secured the Let It Go achievement. The achievement collecting is not stopping yet. I used a dried kelp block to power a furnace to get alternative fuel, and got bullseye by shooting the middle of a target block. I know some people struggle with this achievement, but it's really not that hard. My only advice is to stand close to it and keep shooting arrows around the middle until you get it. Simple as that. I then did something very, very dumb. I went looking around for zombie villagers to cure, since I needed an unbreaking 3 trade, and when I found one, which by the way, took the entire night, I splashed the potion on myself, but not the zombie villager. That was my last potion I had, and if I went back home to get new ones, he would despawn. So I just wasted like 20 minutes. It's probably the stupidest thing I've done so far in this series, and I've died like 27 times. So I cleared my mind by getting another achievement, Caves and Cliffs. Basically, all I had to do for this achievement is jump from world height all the way to bedrock level, which for me means digging down a bedrock and building a dirt tower up to build height. I really didn't want to mess this up, but luckily, all was good. When it became night, I went looking for some zombie villagers again, and found four of them. While I was leading them home, I saw a witch and poisoned it for the taste of your own medicine achievement. Now this is where the game straight up trolls me. I tried leading the zombie villagers across a cobblestone bridge I made, but these creatures from hell needed a map for how lost they were. These morons decided it would be better to drown themselves rather than cross my bridge. Like what even is this? So I had to make the bridge wider and transport one of them by boat, and let me tell you, this is when I think I one up myself in terms of complete stupidity. I got all of these villagers inside my house, got them trapped and ready to cure, but they burned by the sun because of my glass roof! 
Man, I was so annoyed. You cannot make this stuff up. I then made a shocking discovery. I need netherite. I'm this far into the game, so why don't I have it? You may think I'm too lazy, which you're not wrong, but there's still another reason. Thanks to the update last year, you need this netherite upgrade armor trim thingy in order to actually upgrade this stuff. It can only be found in bastions and is a pain to obtain. Not to mention, I also have to find the ancient debris too. So you know, an annoying process. But you know what that means, time for bastion searching. I head off to the nether and look in all directions, go across lava lakes, not to mention by foot. Yeah, I was way too paranoid about losing my light shot that I straight up just didn't take it. It made the process so much more tedious, but after a few minutes, I found my first bastion. Long story short, it was bad. The only good thing I found was gold blocks, and the piglins kept jumping me like I committed a war crime, which to be fair, I was stealing their gold, but I don't care. I left it disappointed, but I was still ready to continue the search. I was able to find another bastion pretty quickly, and yeah, the bastion wasn't much better. The only good thing I found was a diamond pickaxe in a chest, which ain't bad, but it's not what I came for. Once again, I left frustrated. So frustrated that I almost lost everything, literally everything. My clumsy butt wasn't paying attention near lava, and this happened. But then I remembered that I'm OP, so I was able to get out of the lava pretty quickly. That was close. What was also close was another bastion, which was literally right in front of me when I got out of the lava. I climbed up the mammoth of a structure hoping to find anything useful. And I mean, the only useful things I found up there were more gold and a lodestone. So I'm 0 for 3 in bastions. Devastated, angry, tired. The feeling of incompletion was in the back of my mind. I needed to find the netherite upgrade template. I walked through many biomes, lava lakes, which were hundreds of blocks away from spawn. I was way too far from home, but I couldn't give up. Why did they make this one item so rare? Why oh why? I just kept looking, and looking, until, there it was, my final hope, a treasure bastion. I know this one has crazy loot, so I did my best to find the netherite template. I entered the bastion, it was filled to the brim with enemies. The pavelins attacked me everywhere I went, they kept coming, but I couldn't die. I was too far away from home. I swiftly made my way to the middle of the treasure room with the best chest. I made sure I was safe from the mobs and held my breath before opening the chest. Boom, there it was, the netherite upgrade smithing template. Finally, four bastions in and I found it. Now I needed to get out ASAP, as fast as I could. I darted out of there like a bat out of hell. Haha, <laughs> get it? Cause the nether? When I finally got back, I could rest. There was a huge sigh of relief. Now, the cool thing about the netherite upgrade template is that you can duplicate it using diamonds. No, I don't mean a glitch. It's an actual crafting recipe in the game. Meaning, I never, ever need to find another bastion again. Or at least I hope. Well, that's not the end of the nether expeditions. I'm now more eager than ever to go netherite mining. So, I shear my sheep to make beds. Then go back in the nether and dig down. Boom, boom, boom. After I used up all of my beds, I end off the trip with 14 ancient debris, which is pretty crazy if you ask me. So when I got back, I immediately smelted them into netherite scraps and turned them into netherite ingots. I'm probably gonna hold on to them for now. At this point, I had no idea what to do. I was completely confused. Until I saw a pillager patrol. I immediately went ahead and killed the pillagers, and when I killed the captain, it gave me the bad omen effect. And also got me the I've got a bad feeling about this achievement. I wanted to travel all the way back to my stronghold village, but made the dumb mistake of going back to my house, which somehow triggered a raid on my single villager. I was confused, but I did get the we're being attacked achievement out of it. The problem about this raid was that after a couple waves or so, I could not, for the life of me, find a single pillager, or any mob for that matter. So I just ignored it, and got some new wool colors for the rainbow collection achievement. I ended up getting all but four wool colors, as the other four dyes, I needed either cocoa beans or cactus green. I went looking around in the night to find some zombie villagers, because I really needed Unbreaking 3, especially for my elytra, which I'm really paranoid about for some reason, but I had zero luck at all. When it became daytime, I traded some of my books in exchange for emeralds, which got me the Hagler achievement for training for 30 emeralds. I then finally enchanted my elytra with mending. However, I still didn't want to use it. I went to the big plains biome via minecart, and it was there where I finally found a zombie villager that would let me cure it. Once I cured it, it was easy, but also hard getting him back to my base, even if I do have a massive railway. Transporting with boats just ain't efficient. When I got him into his room, I spent forever trying to get him to trade me Unbreaking 3, but in the end, it was definitely worth it. I then traded for an Unbreaking 3 book and put it on my elytra. Finally, I can use the elytra as a primary transport. The first thing I did with my enchanted elytra was work towards getting the map room achievement, which is where you have to fully explore 9 different maps and put them in a 3x3 array of item frames. I thought this achievement would be like hell on earth, but in reality, this achievement was way easier than I thought. In bedrock condition, all you need to do is make a level 0 map, which is pretty much all explored for you, and do that 9 times. Very easy, especially for the elytra. I remember having to do this on the Xbox One edition, where the maps 
maps were way bigger and you basically needed to explore the whole world to get it. Anyways, this achievement was a breeze, and the only thing that was hard was getting enough paper for the maps. Despite literally having a fully auto sugarcane farm, I was still in desperate need of paper, so I went and made a manual sugarcane farm right next to the river at my base. This manual farm may end up being more useful than my automatic farm. I then casually got the supersonic achievement, which is where you need to fly through a 1x1 one one block gap going really fast with elytra, which seems hard until you realize you can easily cheese it by flying downwards with water to stop you from dying. You do need a huge tower though. Another tower related achievement is top of the world, where you have to place scaffolding to the world limit. Luckily for me, I have a massive bamboo farm, so I used the bamboo to make scaffolding, then spammed it to the top of the world for the achievement. After that, I wanted to finish getting the rainbow collection achievement, so I looked for a desert for cactus green, and the closest one I could find was like 2,000 blocks away. I then got a few cactuses, headed back, and smelted them into cactus green. And with the cactus green, I used it to make green, lime, and cyan wool, nearly finishing the collection. All I needed was brown wool, which needs cocoa beans. And luckily, there was a jungle nearby, so I went there and got some. When I got back, I used the cocoa beans for brown wool, completing the rainbow collection. I wasn't done with the jungle just yet, so I went back and ended up getting a few achievements there. I got zoologist for breeding two pandas, which by the way, is way harder than it should be, and got lion tamer for taming an ocelot. I then flew over to the plains biome, where I bred a horse and a donkey for the artificial selection achievement, which took a good while because I forgot that you actually needed to tame horses and donkeys before breeding them. I got another animal achievement when I flew all the way back to the desert just to kill a rabbit, giving me, well, raw rabbit. Then I I went back home and smelted it to make cooked rabbit, giving me the rabbit season achievement. I realized my elytra was almost broken, somehow already. This is why I really wanted to enchant it with unbreaking and mending. Elytra is very fragile, so I went back to the nether to look for netherite, but to also mend my elytra using quartz underground, killing two birds with one stone. From that, I got eight pieces of ancient debris, which was honestly pretty sick. Now I decided to finally use most of the netherite I had. I got the netherite upgrade trim and duplicated it a bunch, then used my netherite bars with it to make a netherite pickaxe, sword, leggings, and helmet. I still had some left over, but for now, I'll save some for later. Now I went back to the nether, for absolutely no reason, except for finally completing the hot tourist destination achievement by visiting every nether biome. The only biome that was left was the basalt deltas, which wasn't too hard to find with elytra, but still too far away from my liking. There, another easy achievement. Okay, so my notes say that in this recording, I just did random crap but got nothing done. Uh, okay then. So yeah, I did a random crap, and the random crap was to make some new rooms for future villagers, and go fishing. The reason I went fishing was to work towards the plethora of cats achievement, where you need to tame 20 cats. So I went to the nearby village and tamed a few. So now's the time where I got a huge idea. The idea of visiting a woodland mansion. Basically because I was out of ideas. I found a cartographer villager, trapped him in a house, and started trading with him. When I got back home, it became nighttime, and I found some zombie villagers, whom I converted into farmer villagers. Also, I totally didn't not have any problems with them at all. It's not like they almost died, haha. <laughs> I had so much villagers that they actually managed to spawn a cat, which I tamed. I'll name him Lucky 2.0, as a throwback to the Xbox One Edition video. He'll be useful for another achievement in the future. Not to get sidetracked again, I went back to the village and purchased a woodland explorer map, which is just a map that says where the nearest woodland mansion is. And in bedrock edition, it might be the only way to find a woodland mansion in your world, because they usually spawn out in the damn far lands. I'm kidding, but still. Yeah, they spawn far away. I then began my quest, equipped my pair of wings, and flew into the sky. I searched into the night, passed some of the craziest terrain I've ever seen. Like, damn, look at this Badlands biome. I was in awe of this world, but I needed to continue. I eventually ended up in a dark oak biome, where the Woodland Mansion actually was. I landed on the roof, and it gave me the Treasure Hunter achievement since I purchased a Woodland Explorer map from the cartographer and flew here. I entered the mansion, very spooky. There was nothing too notable until I found this prison room, which is full of allays. And you may be thinking, why are you telling me this? Well, here's the thing. There's this achievement called the Birthday Song, where you need to, and I quote, have an Malay drop a cake on a note block. And if that sounds weird to you, go look up a tutorial. For this achievement, I need a few different things. Two cakes, a note block, and an allay. And guess what? I only had the allay. Now I had to get the other stuff. The first thing I did was go mining for redstone for the note block, which was 100% the easy part, because making two cakes was somehow the bane of my existence. For cakes, I need a crap ton of items, including eggs, which sound easy to get, but when you actually want a chicken to drop one, they become extremely useless. I trapped a chicken inside an area, and man, it would not give me a single egg. So I just decided to do that later. 
later and went back inside the mansion. I explored a bit more, but didn't really find anything. I ended up killing an evoker for the feeling ill achievement and got a totem of undying. When I was done with the mansion, I jumped off of it holding the totem, which got me the cheating death achievement. Now for this silly birthday song achievement. Like I said, getting the cakes is the hardest part somehow. I went and got some sugar cane for sugar and grew wheat seeds for, well, wheat. I then trapped a chicken and waited patiently for it to drop two eggs. It took a lot longer than it should have. Or, I don't know, but it felt like a long time. Finally, I milked some cows and finished making the cakes. Next, I went inside and found the LAs, and used one for the achievement. Listen closely. I put the note block down, and gave a cake to the LA, dropped my other cake nearby, and played the note block. The LA dropped the cake onto the note block, and got me the achievement. <laughs> At last, I was finished with the mansion, so I gathered up everything and flew home. Though I did stop by a village on the way back, just to tame a few more cats for a plethora of cats. At this point, I was nearing 100 achievements, which is a tremendous feat, especially in this version. And for my 100th achievement, I wanted to kill the wither, so I needed to start thinking about that. So in the meantime, let's get some random achievements. I used most of my diamonds to duplicate more netherite upgrade trims, so I can make more netherite armor, which got me the cover me in debris achievement. Right after that, I went to sleep, but made sure my cat, Lucky 2.0, was standing up, so he would lay on my bed and give me a gift in the morning. All that was actually for the achievement, Where Have You Been? Another easy one down. In the morning, I spent a while flying around until I found a pillager outpost, which was definitely not the easiest thing to do, but it's alright. I killed the pillager captain and got bad omen, then immediately flew back to my plains village. That triggered a raid, a real one this time, since last time it was on a single villager. I tried ringing the bell for the sound the alarm achievement, but it did absolutely nothing. I don't know why. Anyways, the raid was very easy. The hard the hardest part was probably trying to find the pillagers who just spawned in the most god-awful locations. I did end up killing a ravager, and that got me kill the beast. After the raid, it was nighttime, and when zombies started to spawn, I rang the village bell. And for some reason, that was the deciding factor for me getting the sound the alarm achievement, which I got as I was flying away. I got home and stored a bunch of my stuff, as my inventory was getting insanely crowded as always. The next day, I decided to fly over to a coral reef for sea pickles. You, you'll see. Next to the reef, I saw a another village, where I tamed a few more cats. When I got home, I went ahead and got the 1 pickle, 2 pickle, sea pickle, 4 achievement for placing 4 sea pickles in a group. Yeah, they're just making anything an achievement at this point. Clever name though. I then wanted to start a big project, a building project of some sort. I'm gonna call it Slap Just Slap's Legendary Achievement Place, or Slap for short. I'll probably just call it Achievement Hall though. Basically, it's gonna be a long hallway dedicated to every single achievement in the game. There's no reason to do this, but it will be cool I guess. A project to work on when I'm not getting achievements. Anyways, I have no idea why I'm hyping this up. I do absolutely nothing with this project except deciding where to put it. Well, now you know what I'm gonna be doing in part 3 I guess. When it became night, my mission was to get the Sniper Duel achievement, where you need to shoot a skeleton from at least 50 blocks away. The problem is that it might despawn if I get that far away, so I used my only name tag on him. I also trapped it in a boat to ensure that it would not budge a singular block. I went back about 50 blocks and sniped this guy like by second try. I was worried that I was too close and that I wouldn't get the achievement, but luckily that wasn't the case and I got it. Now, I was at a total of 98 achievements and it was time to prepare for the wither but I didn't have enough materials. That being wither skeleton skulls. I only had one skull at the moment, so I needed to go back to the nether and grind for more. I went back to the fortress, but I was definitely not expecting all the mobs that would jump me just like that. I mean, I'm about to fight the wither and I'm nearly dying to these mobs. Perhaps I should have packed a couple fire res potions. The wither skeletons weren't the main problem. It was these god awful blazes, quite literally forged in the depths of hell. They made my time so annoying, man. After a couple near death experiences, I finally I finally got both wither skeleton skulls, literally almost back to back, which you never see for something that rare. I was happy, but I did not want to stay there for another minute, so I booked it and got out of there immediately. This was it, 98 achievements, 3 wither skeleton skulls, enough motivation to beat the Minecraft bedrock wither. Just like part 1, I'm ending off the video with an epic boss fight finale. Now it was preparation time. I went ahead and prepared some strength, regeneration, and night vision potions for the battle. That wasn't all. I was so paranoid that I brought a totem of undying to the fight. After getting everything ready, and really thinking about it, I went down to the mines, and went way far down, because I was really paranoid about the wither's destruction capabilities. I dug a huge tunnel and made 
an area to spawn the wither. I drank my night vision potion so I wasn't partially blind during the fight. Then I placed the three wither skeleton skulls and watched the summoning begin. A big explosion started off the fight and I rushed to shoot my arrows at its three heads. And after it dealt like a single heart of damage to me, I chugged my first potion. Because you know, I was paranoid as hell. The fight was simple at first, but as soon as I got it to half health, man oh man, did it ever lag my aim. I mean, my Xbox is old, but still. Is the wither fight usually this laggy for you guys? Let me know. By the time I was done recovering from that insane amount of lag, I found out that the wither dug a whole pit. I jumped down, and the amount of lag that I experienced was like no other. Seeing all the deep slate blocks fall was like a work of art running at 4 frames per second. I rapidly started stabbing the wither as fast as I could, which was the finishing move. The wither exploded shortly after, awarding me the nether star. Okay, first off, let's get this thing out of the way. Look at all these diamonds the wither revealed. I mean, it's free real estate. I kind of need them anyway. I mined all the diamonds and put them in my shulker box. I then started to go back home after my victory. Wait, wait, wait. Let's hold up a second. Where in God's name are my achievements? I successfully spawned and defeated the wither, so where are they? Good question. I think the game was just being weird and waited too long to give me the achievements, because like 10 minutes after the fight, it was then when I got them. I cannot explain to you why this happened, but okay. I arrived back home and stored my many items, then got my nether star and crafted a beacon, my trophy of victory. But you know what this means? This means I have successfully completed 100 out of the total 125 achievements that exist in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Not bad, but still not done. After the wither fight, this only leaves me 25 achievements, some easy, some hard, and some that are brutal, tedious, grueling, and nearly impossible. We're in the end game now, fellas. Sorry for the long wait. These videos take ages to make, especially for one single person. I really hope you enjoyed the sequel, and I will see you guys in part 3, the finale. As always, thanks so much for watching. Slap to slap, out.